Let's bring in CBS News political contributor Leslie Sanchez. She is a Houston resident. She and her mother evacuated to the nearby town of Sugarland, Texas, and she joins me now on the phone. Leslie, you and your mother made your way to a voluntary evacuation zone. Tell us what it is like on the ground there. Sure. Um, I'm in Fort Bend County, Elaine, and that is one of the areas that just started early this morning with voluntary, in most cases voluntary, and a very small number, about 20 percent of the county, of, of mandatory evacuations, mostly in Rosenberg and the Richmond area, the southwestern side of Houston, a suburban area. A lot of commuters into Houston in the medical center there. And, and uh, as the day progressed, the big issue is the Brazos River. It's already about three feet above its um, its flood stage, and it, it's at, at about right now it's about 48 feet, and it's, it's expected to get to 59 feet. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these levees that are in areas such as Siena Plantation, areas that they thought would that are newer communities. Mm -hmm that a lot of officials thought would be pretty safe for something like this. We're never prepared for that. And all of a sudden, in the middle of the day, they, they have mandatory evac evacuations because they were concerned about the ability to move 75, 80,000 people. So it was a mad scramble right. and, and a lot of confusion, Elaine. I don't yeah. think that's been the biggest and, and most frustrating and probably terrifying part is neighbor after neighbor, we all convene. Everyone's knocking on each other's doors. Who's going? Who's staying? What do you do? What do you take? How do you pack up your car that fast? Mm -hmm. You don't expect that to be the case. Um, you expect it to be volunteering. You didn't expect to be, you know, kind of running. And, and no one could really figure out a safe way for several hours to get out of the neighborhoods because the water was already rising. Right. So I had to drive through um, some high water. Everything I tell people not to do, it was not, you know, above the tires, but it was mm -hmm. certainly uh, a exactly where you don't want to be right. um and 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 that's how quickly the situation's changing on the ground so leslie when we talked to you on sunday the main concern where you were sienna plantation was the after effects of the winds basically causing a lot of damage there um whether or not it was a tornado we don't know but um, some of the pictures that you were showing us from your instagram feed i know on sunday really showed the sheer force um, of those winds that came through. But now you're saying you've also had this added issue of the potential for the Brazos River um, to swell up even more. And when I look at the map here, so the Brazos River runs sort of just south of where you are right now. How far away are you? And how is it that you know that you are out of danger at the moment? That's a great question. Um, really, we spend a lot of time looking um, at the Twitter feed of the Fort Bend County uh, OEM. It's the Emerg Office of Emergency Management. They have a map, an interactive map. You put in your address, and immediately it, it, uh, it tells you if you're in the red, uh, which is mandatory evacuation or yellow zone. And that's what was strange. Uh, even neighbors talking to neighbors, uh, and even on air, when some of the local affiliates were talking about this, particularly about Siena Plantation, they were, there was confusion because for a long time it was really just voluntary. Yeah. So when it flipped, um, like I told you, getting the word out took some time, and then there was a mad rush to the one grocery store <laughs> that right. people could find that was open. And the, uh, you had people waiting four hours in rising water just to get in. They had to put um, some law enforcement at the door, one person in, one person out. Uh, so it, it it really is it, it's really just a, you're just uh, recalibrating constantly, and mm -hmm. the question is how how do you get out? Um, right. How do you get out, and where do you go? So um, the, the neighboring area just down Highway Six, a lot of Highway Six is flooded, and you have to kind of circuitously move your way through mm -hmm. some of that high water. Um, it is uh, the neighboring is Sugarland, and there's an area there that's voluntary evacuation, which is really where my hometown is. Mm -hmm. So we knew a lot of people there, and it was easy enough to get there at that point. But Elaine, that's the other that's the other issue. People were waiting. You have some people saying they're going to, you know, stay in shelter at home in Siena Plantation. No one believes the levee is going to be jeopardized mm -hmm. or compromised. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. And, uh, and I'm very hopeful that is the case. Uh, but you have a lot of people just uh, not heeding that mandatory evacuation. Uh, and it's probably split. I'm not sure of the exact percent, but it's a community very confident in that levee system. Yeah, I mean, I can't even imagine, Leslie, um, you know, you've got these images of people being rescued in Houston. You've got thousands of people evacuating to shelters. 
Um, what has so far stood out to you most about this experience? You know, I, I, Elaine, as somebody who comes, you have many generations taking care of each other. I have my mom with me. Uh, my mom doesn't swim. She'll say that all the time. She's very fearful of water. A lot of elders are uh, elderly or, or feel fearful of water. Um, you have so many young children um, who are wearing floaties. Uh, it's just how do you manage all of your family members and make the right choice? And that's really what we talk about. You have really just a few minutes to figure out, do you get in the car, heed the warning, and try to make your way through high water in some cases somewhere. Um, mm -hmm. There's a neighbor we had in Siena Plantation. It took him about four hours to cross the southwest side of Houston. Mm -hmm. Uh, to get to a shelter at Katy High School, yeah. uh, it, you know, and she was just glad to, to, to have been able to stop. They thought they would get to Austin, and you just can't make it. Right. Um, so, and there's no direct path. So many hours on the road, and, and you're, tr you're just trying to look at um, how many hours till dark, because mm -hmm. that was the other, you don't want to be out here driving with your children, your pets, and your mom, you know, driving absolutely. No, absolutely. So we make light of it, but um, I'm glad because I'm, I'm now um, safe and dry. And just waiting to see, and you have to keep rechecking these websites, in, in, in the next 24 hours, we'll have a better sense of the Brazos River. And so that's, it's really 24 hours from now we're going to know hopefully where it crushed and, where, and what the, uh, the uh, after effects are going to be of this all across southwest Houston. Well, Leslie Sanchez in Sugarland, Texas. Leslie, it's great to hear your voice. I'm glad to hear that you and your mom are okay, and we wish you nothing but the best, hoping that that river uh, stays well within the control of those levees. Thanks so much, Leslie. Thank you all.